Good afternoon and welcome to the Washita News Show. I'm Kaylin Clay. And I'm Haley Short. To begin our show today, Kennedy Holland has the latest on the weather. Kennedy? Hey Tigers, welcome to your Washita Weather Watch. To begin off this week, things are going to feel a tad bit cooler as we roll into the final days of winter. Spring officially starts on March 20th, even though it still feels like spring with temperatures in the 70s last week and holding into the 60s this week. What will be coming with these cooler temperatures though is some rain. Today has been especially wet with some rain lasting throughout the early morning. We'll be seeing more rain tomorrow and Saturday, but thankfully things will clear up by Monday for a couple of nice clear skies. This Sunday is spring forward, so make sure to set your clocks one hour ahead because you don't want to be late to your class on Monday. That's all for the Washita Weather Watch. Predictions are by AccuWeather. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Kennedy. Over the past week, many things have been happening on campus. Last week consisted of Healthy Relationships Week. Many guest speakers were brought in to spread the importance of healthy relationships within friendships, the workplace, and romantic relationships. As well as Healthy Relationships Week, it was Tiger for Life Week here on campus. The Washita Student Foundation worked hard throughout the week, spreading gratitude to the fellow donors that have contributed to making our beloved campus possible. In order to raise student scholarship money, OSF hosted the annual 5K Fund Run. Our own Josh Engel has more. On the streets of Arkadelphia, tons of people are joining together to run in support of student scholarships. The Fund Run went on last week with tons of success. Dozens of people participated in the event and had a blast supporting others and building community. Um, I think it's a great way that uh, students can still have community. And I've seen a bunch of people running with friends. And you don't even have to run. It's just walking. It's just like building community, getting to know people. And I think that what it's going for is really good. The event started in the Village Circle. Those that showed up would first grab a number before going and warming up. Individuals, friends, and even families were there to run. We get people like track runners um, from Washtaw. We've gotten community members, staff, um, all different types of students. We had walkers, we had runners, we had strollers, dogs, even this year. So, a wide variety. There's always at least one baby. <laughs> always at least one. People that joined were not expected to run, but in fact could jog or even walk the path. Participants were encouraged to go at their own pace. The point wasn't to be the fastest, it was to support students. This is the second time that the fund run has been put on, the first of which was put on in the fall semester last year. However, when the running's over, the real fun begins. The end of the race was down at Cone Bottoms. Once runners finished, they could enjoy a drink and find out their time while listening to live music. I wanted to uh, go out and support OSF because it's a great cause, and I just wanted to have fun and uh, see what I could do today. So, yeah, just, uh, I, my goal was 520 pace, so. Okay, and did yeah. you hit it? I did. The event wasn't without its mishaps, though. Apparently, the wind caused some real problems for Alex and Addie, who organized the event. Our tent for the t-shirt table actually at the end of the finish line flew away. It just went up in the air and then we were like, huh, that's going to be expensive and we just watched it land. Since this was only the second time this event had been put on, it definitely wasn't without its fair share of hiccups. However, things definitely went better this year compared to last. This year's went a lot smoother um, just because last year was our was everybody's first time knowing or doing this. Um, and this year we actually got to get ahead of it and plan and make contacts. This event will make a big difference in the lives of many people and has united students, faculty and alumni together for a great cause. For Washita News, I'm Joshua Engel. Thank you, Josh. Well, the fun run was so much fun. I'll definitely have to run it again next year. Last week, Washita hosted the Career and Networking Expo for current Washita students to attend. This gave many the opportunity to chat with businesses from all over the state. Our very own Haley Short has more about the expo. Haley? Today, I'm here at Walker Conference Center for the Career and Networking Expo. Over 50 businesses and schools are here to meet Washita students, hopefully to recruit them for internships or new jobs. Let's take a look inside. The space was filled with Washita students who signed up for the event, eager for the chance to chat with these statewide organizations. After mingling for a while, I had the opportunity to chat with a few companies about what qualities they look for in an employee. We want an energetic candidate who wants to serve others um, because as 
a city, we're really here for the residents. We want to make sure that we're creating a great place to live, work, and play, um, and that's what it's all about. Whenever we look for our new diplomats, we, we focus on what we call the 13 dimensions, which are qualities that we want our new candidates to demonstrate, and it's things that any good um, employer would want their employees to have. As I mentioned, Murphy is a very humble company. We're looking for honest, um, hardworking individuals with high standards, high integrity, um, and willing to, to go out there and do, do what's best for the company. The event additionally offered free headshots and access to a buffet for the attendees. Several students also discovered that their field of study can apply to various jobs offered in these companies. Next, I spoke with sophomore Washita student Andrew Ellis about what drew him to this beneficial event. I came here today because um, we always hear about the next steps in life, and I feel like there's never really too early to get a start. And just I wanted to come expand my network, meet some people, and also see what, what's out there. A lot of us don't know exactly what we want to do uh, or how to get there. So just going around, seeing what different businesses, different schools have to offer, uh, and just what opportunities there are for us after we graduate. Well, I think it's safe to say everyone in there was having a great time making connections, enjoying good food, and just enjoying each other's company. Another great event for Washita. Back to you guys at the news studio, I'm Haley Short. That was such a fun event to attend. I look forward to next year's one. This Thursday, everyone is invited to come and taste some free coffee samples and sweet treats at Dr. Jack's in the Stew at 10 a.m. Later Thursday night, the Washita Symphonic Band will be performing in the Jones Performing Arts Center at 7.30 p.m. Refuge will be following this event at 9 p.m. at Second Baptist Church. On Friday, the women of Tri-Chi and the women of EEE are having a percentage day at Samantha's from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And later that night, both clubs will be hosting Space Jam in the Tiger Den from 8 to 10 p.m. It is $3 for singles and $5 for couples to attend. All proceeds will be going to support the philanthropies of Tri-Chi and EEE. This Saturday, All Night Theater will be taking place in Verser Theater at 7.30 p.m. This event does count as an arts engagement credit, so grab your friends and create some fun memories together. Along with that, the Rock Wall and the Crag will be open from 8 to midnight. Chloe Velleman is in the studio with the Roar Rundown. Chloe, what do our Tigers got going on this week? Welcome back to the Roar Rundown, everybody. I'm Chloe Velleman, and boy has it been an exciting week for Tiger Athletics as we wrapped up winter sports and spring sports have opened in full swing. Starting off last week, we had a huge performance from Johnny Green in the NCAA Super Regionals for Wrestling. On Sunday, Green finished runner-up in the heavyweight bracket and has earned himself a trip to Nationals in two weeks in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Next, we get into the swing of things with Tiger Baseball. OBU Baseball landed its first victory of the week on Tuesday with a non-conference 6-4 win over Harding and Searcy. The Tigers, who are currently 8-5, built their 6-0 lead in the first five innings, which helped hold off the Bison's late runs in the bottom of the ninth. Isaac Now gave Washita their first score on a two-run single, and Michael Quinones put the Tigers up 3-0 in the second inning with his RBI single, later putting his team up further 5-0 on a two-run single in the fourth. Cade Burris secured the Tigers' final run with an RBI double in the fifth inning. Later in the week, the Tigers swept their doubleheader against the Arkansas Monticello Weevils on Sunday with scores of 5-3 for the first and 3-0 for the second. This win was a highlight for pitching staff as the Tigers only used three arms in the two games combined. Cooper Timmons threw seven innings in the first with just three runs off five hits and eight strikeouts. Dustin Bermudez gave a two-inning save in Game 1, giving up no runs on two hits and three strikeouts in just one walk. In Game 2, Teddy Webb threw a game shutout, only allowing four hits and seven strikeouts with just one walk, earning Washita its first shutout victory for the season. Washita ended the weekend on Monday, no thanks to the rain, as Monticello flipped the script to shut out the Tigers with a 13-0 victory in seven innings. However, thanks to the doubleheader win, the Tigers did take the series win two games to one. The Tigers are set to return to Rab Rogers Field this upcoming weekend to host Arkansas Tech in a three-game GAC series. Still in the world of bats, balls, and gloves, the Lady Tigers also played a three-game series against Arkansas Monticello. However, didn't come out on top quite like the boys. The girls fell to the Cotton Blossoms 18-2 in Game 1 and 4-2 in Game 2. 
Even with Washita scoring first in game one with Maggie Huddleston hitting a two-run RBI single that brought in Hope Wade and Aaron Williams, UAM was still no match once they still took their 3-2 lead in the second inning. The Blossoms went on to score 10 runs in the fourth and fifth innings, shutting down Washita 18-2 in just five innings. These games starting pitcher Tuesday Melton earned the loss, making her season record 5-3. The second game was a battle between pitchers as both had thrown known hitters until the fifth inning. With runners left stranded on base for both teams in the fourth innings, UAM finally earned the first hit with a single to the left side. The Tigers loaded their bases with Lacey Arnellis, Lauren Lester, and Callie Jordan in the bottom half of the fourth. The Tigers were the first to score and break the tie with Jesselyn Ahrens single up the middle that scored Emma McCorkle. Hope Wade would get hit by a pitch that would score Lester, putting the Tigers up 2-0. In the top of the sixth, the, the Blossoms would put across four runs and hold the lead the rest of the game. The Lady, the Lady Tigers dropped the third game of the series in the 10-0 shutout from the Cotton Blossoms. UAM started with a 3-0 lead with the Tigers' bats not able to answer back. The Blossoms put up seven more runs, making it 10-0 in just the second inning, but also making this the last time either team would score. The Tigers were able to uh, keep UAM from scoring the rest of the game, but ended the shutout in inning five after not being able to string together enough hits to score. Washita will hope to get back on track this weekend as they travel to Russellville to take on the Arkansas Tech Golden Suns in a three-game GAC series. The Washita Tigers men's basketball team upset the number one seeded Southern Nazarene Crimson Storm in the first round of the GAC tournament in Shawnee, Oklahoma with a winning score of 70-67. This is the first time an eight seed team has beat the number one seed team in the men's GAC tournament since 2015, mostly thanks to a 27 point performance from Adarius Hobson. Washita put up points first, making the first two baskets of the game now being 5-0 over SNU. The Tigers held the lead for the next couple minutes, with the Crimson Storm finally taking the lead 8-7 with 16.09 left in the first half. Just 30 seconds later, the Tigers would regain their lead with a jumper from Hobson. They continued to push the lead to a five-point difference, but SNU retook the lead with 9.42 left in the half. There was a four-minute scoreless streak that was eventually broken by Tyler Haynes' free throw, tying the game at 19 with 5.42 left. The Tigers went into halftime with a two-point, 28-26 lead. SNU took the lead back quickly started in the second half, just 90 seconds in. However, the Tigers got their heads back in the game with a 10-0 run over the Crimson Storm, taking a nine-point lead with 14.40 left in the half. They pushed the lead to double digits the first time of the game, making the score to 45-35 with just under 12 minutes left. With 10 minutes left, the Tigers remained in a comfortable double-digit lead. Washita would see an 11-point lead with just 3.43 left in the game. With just two minutes left, the Tigers looked in hot water as both teams missed easy shots, but the Crimson Storm was able to sink a couple more shots than the Tigers. With 39 seconds left, Southern Nazarene had themselves a three-point game thanks to four free throws. A storm foul sends Marvin Williams Dunn back to the free throw line late in the game with only five seconds to spare. He missed the first but made the second, giving the Tigers their three-point advantage over the storm. The storm missed their final shot attempt, giving Washita the upset over the 11th nationally ranked team, which moved them on to the semifinals game. However, the guys would wrap up their season with a 73-66 loss to the Arkansas Tech Golden Suns. This would end the GAC season and the tournament for the Tigers, putting them 12-16 overall in the season and 9-13 and in GAC play, giving the team their first double digits win since the 2019-2020 season. This season earned Laquan Butler Jr. an All-Great American Conference honor for his performance during the 22-23 season. He was named to the All-GAC second team thanks to his efforts on the court, this also being his first year with the Tigers. He played and started in all but one of the 26-game regular seasons for the Tigers. He leads the team in scoring with 15.6 points per game and leads in assists with 84, had a three-point percentage of 40%, and is second on the team in free throw percentage with 81.9% from the charity stripe. This season also saw head coach Dennis Nunn earn his 150th win at the top of the Tigers program, being just the second in men's basketball coach history to earn this many wins with the Tigers. It's always a good day when the Lady Tigers knock the Henderson Reddies out of semifinals with a 70-53 victory in the Great American Conference Tournament, also leading the Lady Tigers to semifinals for just the second time in history. Washita, 15-12, is the second six-seed team to win an opening round game in the GAC Tournament. This also earned the Tigers their first GAC Tournament quarterfinal victory since 2012, the first year of the GAC League. 
The win also broke the tie for the seri season series between the Tigers and the Reddies after each team defended their home turf during the regular season. After a very tightly wound first half, the Tigers finally blaze over the Reddies in the third quarter, outscoring them 22-6 with HSU going scoreless for the final seven minutes. A three-pointer by Heidi Robinson gave the Tigers a 12-0 run to end the third and gave Washita its first double-digit lead of the game. They kept their lead in the fourth, showing off their best shooting performance yet. They connected on a 5 of 8 field goal attempt and 12 of 13 foul shots in the fourth, leading to their very convincing margin of victory. The Tigers had their largest lead of the game at 19 in the final minute. However, the girls wrapped up their season, best season in a decade with a 78-51 upset from Harding in the GAC Tournament semifinals round. They finished the season 15-13 overall, giving head coach Robert Dallimore his best season and more continued improvement at the program's helm. This was the first semifinals appearance since 2012 and will need to fill a big hole in departure of first team all-conference senior Michaela Miller. Miller very much earned this title, finishing her time with the Lady Tigers with her name all over the school record book. She went 7 for 12 from the field and 5 for 7 on foul shots. She finished 6th in career scoring with 1,209 points, 9th in career scoring averaging with 13.3, 9th in career field goal percentage, 6th in career field goals made, 6th in career free throws made with 302, 3rd in career free throw attempts, 9th in career rebound average, 2nd in career assists, 4th in career assists per game, and 5th in career steals. Another player by the name of Laney Mears also made all GAC honorable mentions. Mears leads the team in three-pointers made with 77 and leads the GAC in free throw percentage with .928 and three-point field goals per game with 3.0. The Villonia native led the Tigers this year in scoring 14 games and hit the 20-point mark in five games for the 22-23 season. That is all for the Royal Rundown this week. If you want real-time updates, you can go online to obutigers.com and watch the Washtenaw Sports Digital Network's broadcast of every home game, or you can follow us on YouTube and Instagram at OSDN Media. I'm Chloe Velloman, and thanks for joining in. Thank you, Chloe. Well, Haley, this week is shaping up to be a busy one, but spring break is right around the corner. Do you have any fun spring break plans? Oh, absolutely. I'm actually headed to Oklahoma City to play some pickleball, eat some good chicken, maybe watch a hockey game. So fun, fun. Well, that's all we have for you today. Be sure to follow our Instagram page and YouTube channel to keep up with the latest Washington news. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you next time.